More reaction to Jazz Chisholm Jr. hitting it up on the Pivot podcast. Equally, some big news across baseball. Yes, it's opening day, but boy, oh boy, there is further ramifications for the Dodgers and Shohei Otani in particular. Also, we've seen AJ Puck putting in his longest and deepest performance to date. We've seen Sixto with another scoreless inning. The Marlins at this point appear to be doing nothing, but should they? I've talked about it plenty. I've got a guest to come and help me dig into many of these topics on today's Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked on Marlins. This is your daily Marlins pod, of course. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up on X at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you're listening to the pod, of course, firstly, hello. Welcome to opening day, I guess. MLB opening day. The real opening day is next week. Um, But nevertheless, welcome to MLB opening day. It is Wednesday, the 20th of March. This is your team every day, of course, and thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen. It could be your second listen, to be honest with you, because if you're like me, you've already probably dove into the Fish on First episode, Unfiltered, with Craig Mish. Rightly so. I came away from that thinking, man, I miss swing. I, I, miss, I miss swings and mishes. Try saying that fast. Nevertheless, there is a YouTube channel as well, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe over on the YouTube channel as well. That is. Named Locked On Marlins, hit subscribe and join me in the comments. Join everyone in the comments. It's a zoo in the comments, no doubt about it. Uh, this episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, you can create an account, and you can use the code Locked On for 20 bucks off your first purchase. And I'm delighted to welcome into the house the loud Marlins fan slash loud Miami fan slash LMF slash. <laughs> Chase Blake, how we doing, brother? I'm doing all right, Pete. A lot of game time discussions we have going on today. No doubt. And we are just one week away, one week away from that opening day first pitch upcoming. Yeah, for sure, mate. How you feeling about it? Like, can you can you feel it now? Can you can you touch it? Are you gonna are you gonna be there opening day as well? Of, of course, I will be I there opening day. Uh, some sure. big things pop in for me, uh, which I'll announce on social media shortly in the next couple mm. of weeks, but. Uh, Big things happening for the Marlins. Um, If you go back to our discussion three weeks ago, before Mm -hmm. spring training camp started and to where we are now, and my feeling as good as I was back then, Mm -hmm. yes, regarding the players, (laughs) no, regarding the pitching. Mm -hmm. So we'll get in that discussion, obviously. We will. We will. It's been a tough spring for this Marlins pitching. Some encouraging news. We'll talk about it as we get into it in this episode for sure. But some encouraging news. Also, there's a, a significant amount of news that is absent at this point. I've seen a lot of clamoring on Twitter. A lot of the usual media guys. I don't know. It, it feels like they all sit around the media crew. And then all of a sudden, there's like a domino effect of tweets where they go, hey, there is no news. And we'll tell you when there's news type of thing. And it's like, you know. Jordan McPherson, Christina Di Nicola, Fish on First Crew. Like, it's the domino effect of the same tweets that roll out. But basically, there's no news. Which, considering the Marlins took the situation of having to announce, and they didn't have to announce that, I don't think, but they took the decision to announce that Yuri Perez was going to see Sandy's surgeon, but then, like, silence for multiple days after. Like, everyone's feeling antsy about it, but I think everyone knows how it's going to go. Um... Let me just briefly ask you about opening day, though, Chase, just to round that up. Um, what instrument are you going to be either taking or what are you going to be utilizing this year? Where are you going to be? What's your go-to instrument this year? Well, if you look on X, I posted a video over the weekend for skipping it, and I have a little drum that I purchased that I will Let's be go. pounding and bringing, and I promise we will get loud. <laughs> no doubt, mate. I knew you'd be all over that. Like, I mean, I, I think they brought that in just for you. Um, well, they, to be they took the shot at me saying no pots and pans, so I might <laughs> as well bring something, right? This is it. Yeah, that's true, because pots and pans is your vibe, like the post-game uh, videos, of course, with the pots and pans. I forgot about that. So, yeah, no pots and pans allowed, though. I did also see as well another announcement here from the Marlins. The Marlins are trying everything. 
Like they're trying everything to get some bums into the seats and some revenue generated. I saw today they're going for, I think, all you can eat seats. 52 bucks they start at. So are you going to be digging into those seats as well? Uh, they're not close enough to the field for me. And I say right. that with all respect to that section because the 200 mm -hmm. level is a great spot to watch baseball. Yeah. Uh, but I like being on top of the players and screaming, Steve Ryick, on every strike that we throw. <laughs> um, but they're good seats. Uh, the, the, the $52 for all you can eat is amazing. I mean, in the PNC section, or I, I think there's a new bank that sponsors that section this season behind home plate. That's all you can eat. Kind of the same stuff, to be honest. And pricing yeah. there is 500 bucks a seat or starting at 250 in the back rows. So mm -hmm. it, if you look at the price point, it's great. You know, I, I love chili dogs. I love not their, their nachos. You throw some chili on that. You're good. But yeah, mm -hmm. they're doing everything and anything to get fans in the stands this season, except the one yeah. thing that we want them to do. And that's bring in free agent pitching to help out right now and bring in <laughs> J.D. Martinez. Come on. He's just sitting there waiting, Pete. He, sitting mate, there. he is. He is. I'm 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 pretty stunned that JD Martinez specifically hasn't been signed anywhere at this point. Uh, that that one I think is surprising. I did see Craig Mish talking about it on Twitter the other day. People are asking the question. Uh his response was basically like the Mets are kind of still in and so are the Angels, but I mean, I've spoke about it plenty on this pod, mate. Like there's a perfect fit here for the Marlins in my opinion. It doesn't seem like they're in the mix, but I I purchased the show 24 I'm yeah. playing it. First thing I did was sign free agent J.D. Martinez and assign, yeah. obviously, Yul Garcia to AAA. But <laughs> I'm not saying that piece right now. Uh, going back to what you just said about Yuri, though, and the lack of news, that mm -hmm. scares me. Because me when Sandy was injured, they, they talked about it, and then they spoke about it after he had already gotten the surgery. So, like, that's a little scary uh, that there's mm -hmm. nothing on that right now or no follow-up. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, are we just going to get an image of of Yuri in a hospital bed with his arm kind of like in a sling going, hey, today Yuri yeah, Perez season. had Tommy John surgery and everything went well. Yep. I mean, I, reading between the lines, like that's the expectation at this point, right? I don't, I don't think anyone is really expecting positive news considering what's happening here. <laughs> And if you look at it from the difference, uh, and, and Craig Mish does a great job. He mentioned Garrett Cole on the podcast and yeah. Harrison, where he's just going to miss a few months. Uh, Yuri's young enough where you get that surgery out of the way now. Hopefully you never have to deal again. But get it out of the way if you mm. can. Don't don't prolong it where it's going to be a long injury. Kind of yeah. the uh, Jose Fernandez route. Like Just don't prolong it. Get it over with early in the career and have them make $100 million down the road. Yeah, for sure. And you know, Craig talks about it. I think it's interesting. You know, Garrett Cole, like the, the Yankees approach seemingly is we're going to give him some rest and we're going to try and manage it. But what we saw with Sandy last year, because he wanted to try to manage it and then play through. For me, it's it's probably a fallacy. And really, they're just wasting time, the Yankees, probably. Like, yeah. Cole needs the surgery. Just get it done. The longer you delay it, that's more of the, the season after he's going to be missing too. So, you know, for me, if Yuri needs a surgery, like, which I think he does seemingly, yeah. then let's let's get it done. And, you know, okay, it's not great for 24, but, you know, boy, oh boy, Sandy and Yuri Perez coming back from Tommy John in 25, you know, <laughs> let's get loud. <laughs> let's get louder in 2025. <laughs> Uh, the pitching we go, something I'll come up with something cool by then, but man, no doubt no they're doubt. gonna have to piece this together. We're gonna talk, yeah, puck on the rundown. They're gonna piece this together. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked what Craig and the fish on first team keep saying, you know, it's gonna have to happen. We someone's gonna pitch for us, and that's mm -hmm. that. Whether they bring yeah. up Max, I don't think the plans to bring Max up, you know, I haven't talked since the beginning of spring training. He's done well. All the pitching's done well, but yeah. you're going to use up Ryan Weathers. You're going to abuse him until you can't. Uh, AJ Puck's getting up in there right now. Uh, what a what a game he had, throwing the longest uh, amount of innings he ever has, at least in a long time, um, yeah. or amount of pitches. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're doing the right thing. They know more than us, and I'll stick by that. They know more than us, and <laughs> no doubt about it, it is what it is. Yeah, for sure. Just on Max Meyer, I think it's it's, it's an interesting one. 
They made the decision to option him relative, you know, a, a, at least a week ago, it feels. And he's, you know, there's been a, you know, this Yuri Perez news has happened since. Maybe Eddie Cabrera took a step back. Like, if there was a need to dig back in for Max Meyer, then he would have been kind of recalled from the minor league camp. My sense of Max Meyer specifically is that, you know, what we saw was fine. But really, like, if they were serious, if they were serious with Max Meyer to be a big league piece immediately, then in spring, he would have been out there throwing change-ups, a load of them. Like, and all we saw from Max Meyer was fastball slider, and that's yeah. it. And well, the next evolution of his game is change-up. He needs to have that third pitch. And because he wasn't throwing that right now, that to me says it's still a work in progress. And there's like an, a, a ramping up, I would say, of Max Meyer. The, the Marlins may still have doubts about whether he can actually be a big league starter. I, I think we all still have doubts. Like, we haven't actually ever seen it. We've talked about it, but we haven't ever seen it. So, I, so. I was live on that Saturday game where he went in his first start, I think, two, four innings, 4.1, maybe four and two thirds, something where there yeah. he, 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 he had given up four runs. Like, it wasn't mm -hmm. a great start, his no. first start. And he had all that hype going on top of it. And then the second, he obviously didn't make, I think, even out of the first inning, if that, maybe he went into the second, whatever it was. No, his first couple, inning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's sad that he went down so quickly. Mm -hmm. And now, like, do it right. Like, there's no rush. This isn't 2022 no. where you have to rush him up because there's legit nothing else there or we need some spark plug in, in place. Yeah. They have enough to get by. It's a lot of stress on Lizardo. He's yep. his only healthy season – was last season, mm -hmm. and you and he threw the most innings he ever has into the playoffs, and you hope he could he could do it again. And I, I know he's mentally there, uh, and hope physically, you know they they they're such a core group, and they work so well together. It kind of reminds me even back in the Pablo days, they were all so close that you hope that they're following the same regimen that mm -hmm. the, the Marlins have them under control. Sandy's Sandy's great. Like, he's there every day holding – and you're not there to see it. He's there every day at spring holding the, the clipboard, watching the guys pitch, and talking with them. And yep. it's, it's amazing yep. to see his leadership. Yeah, for sure. We're going to hit the first ad, and I want to get into this Jazz Chisholm Jr. Um, episode. But before we do that briefly, uh, Chase, I wanted to quickly follow up on something we've spoken about regarding the all-you-can-eat situation. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in – I've never been to Lone Depot, but I've been to Marlins Park. Tell me, a chili dog, just how much is that? If you were going to buy that from a concession, how much does a chili dog cost, like broadly? I want to say like seven fifty. Seven fifty. Okay, somewhere cool. around there. Uh, it, okay. there. There's a section there where hot dogs, single hot dogs, are three bucks, but that's the three hundred five section. In the okay. regular sections, it's about seven fifty, eight bucks, somewhere in there. Okay. All right. Cool. So. For me, there's definitely value for money in these seats <laughs> if you're going to plow down some chili dogs. <laughs> um, interested to see. I, I, you know, I applaud the Marlins for trying things. There's no reason why they can't like they can't just simply just do nothing. They have to try things. So I'm interested. I did hear it was funny, like hearing the guys talk about the the instrument situation. A few guys kind of, I think, I think it was on the Fish on First Spaces where a few guys were talking about that, just saying, "Ah, oh, it's not really for me," and maybe they should have sections for it because, you know. Do you want to be sat if you want to be sat there like just in quiet or more of a quieter situation? Do you want Chase next to you with a drum? Is it's probably a fair question. Um, but you know, I guess at the end of the day, there's that many seats available. You can go and sit wherever you want, to be honest with you, in in, uh, in Lone Depot. But yeah, let's um let's hit the ads and let's talk about jazz because uh boy oh boy, that was an explosive podcast, an explosive interview. The best player interview, I think I ever listen to the most open for sure so i'm really interested Ch uh, chase to get your take on that one before we do that this episode is sponsored by our good friends over at prize picks yes sir and the graphics are there for you and prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in north america it's the easiest and most exciting way to play dfs it's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and watch the winnings roll in, baby. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball moments this time of the year. 
Get in on the excitement with Price Picks. It's America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. And while you're there, you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So you download the app today and you use the code Locked On MLB. That's all one word and it's all lowercase. Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Download the app, use the code Locked On MLB. For a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, guys, welcome back. Me, Peter Pratt, and Chase Blake in the house. Loud Marlins fan. LMF. So many. He's known by so many names. It's hard. It's hard to go with the one. Let's talk jazz. Give me your real like I recorded a full episode yesterday. I watched the the full interview, an hour and 20 minutes of action, and I threw out there the key points. Chase, give me your take on on that interview from Jazz Chisholm Jr. As someone who personally knows Jazz from a, a standpoint of meeting him a bunch of times, was talking to him at games, having short conversations here and there, he is the most down-to-earth, genuine person you will speak with. And what you got yesterday is that. That's Jazz. Mm-hmm. And it's raw. It's Jazz. Mm-hmm. He's not sugarcoating anything. He's not... I don't want to say throwing anything under the bus that's not there. And it's the best interview. Usually you get that interview after people retire. Oh, yeah. what happened then? You don't talk about it two years after while some of these players are still in the league. Mm. but And you're still with the same franchise. But what he was speaking about was truth. Those three seasons as a fan were miserable. I could only imagine what it was like in, in that clubhouse for these players. You saw it. They didn't seem like they were gelling together. Look, 2020 was different. The COVID year was different. Agreed. That was, let's say, his rookie, start of his rookie career. But 2021, Mm. 2022 were horrible seasons. And we were out of it by June, and we weren't supposed to be out of it by June. Remember, in 2022, they had just signed Avisayil Garcia. They had just signed Jorge Soler. They, they were going all in with some money there, and the team yeah. on paper was going to look good. 2021, you're coming out of the playoff season, we'll call it. Yep. You, we were all behind Garrett Cooper. We're all uh, stoked up just to have baseball back in person, and they came out flat. Like, they did. On opening they really day, did. on both opening day, whether it was versus the Rays that in 21 mm. or uh, 22. Uh, I forget who they played. Maybe Whatever. Phillies Whoever maybe. Those uh, Phillies were twenty. Uh, oh, they were 20, twenty. Twenty-one was the Rays. I, I've even forgotten about it because it's just been that bad, right? They were yeah. just that bad, and now it was the Braves. I, I believe we, we started in twenty-two against. Um, anyway, so you know they came out so flat, and he's telling you why. As a fan, I love to hear that. I want to hear mm-hmm. that during the season. I want to know why what I'm paying for on the field. As a, as a paying Marlins member, I want to know why it's not coming to fruition. I want to know those behind-the-scenes things. That's why we love those types of shows on HBO that go behind the scenes uh, uh, for the NFL yeah. or for baseball. I think they had one last season or a couple years ago. We mm-hmm. want to know these things. And he just came out flat out, called it out. And you know what? If you're seeing this, you are a jacket. Not going to curse. Stop myself there. But you're a jack <laughs> because you blocked fans. What Jazz doesn't do is ever be rude to fans. He, he's so nice to kids. As I was saying, he's genuine. He's mm. so nice to kids. He's so nice to older fans like myself, even older and look older than me. Maybe my age is look older. But that fans <laughs> of all types, he's friendly. He, he's genuine himself. The way he talked on that podcast is the way he talks to you in person. Normal conversation. This is what's up. And if you don't yeah. like it, you don't like it. And you could cut yeah. me off at any time, Pete. No, I, I, this is <laughs> it. I, I'm, just, I'm interested to get your take on it because, I mean, I, I did 30 minutes on it, like, ran it on. What was your biggest takeaway? Like, what was the moment that stood out to you? I mean, because there was so much in there. Like, so much. Some of it, you know, linked to, like, Kobe. There was stuff in there about his family, people being, like, killed, like, his friends and family and stuff. Like, there was a lot in there. 
Um, even like modern day stuff around the arbitration process in the room, which I thought was really insightful as well, like of Jazz's mentality and actually what he's going to learn for the future. But let, anyway, let, what did you? Let, what was your main takeaway from it? Let's talk about the arbitration piece. Okay, I called that out when the when the arbitration was announced. I did the math on it. That mm-hmm. three hundred thousand dollars or whatnot. That was the games he missed in 2023. That's all it was. It was yeah. that the game's broken down by like 4,500 a game. I think mm-hmm. that's what the salary at 750 was at the time he, yep. he made last year. Broken down. That's all it was. And it is the business. And I think it's yep. sad, just like you don't like the arbitration process. Mm-hmm. I think it's sad that you're you're not really facing the people who who have seen you or are personal with you. They're, they bring in a representative. That's bullshit, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, regarding the family things, look, that's jazz. He's breaking it down. What he went through, mm-hmm. and why he's the way he is. And the fact that no one was there for him during these times, that he was mm-hmm. alone. That's sad to me because, you know, Starling Marte seemed mm-hmm. from, from, he talked well about him. And you can see they had some camar- camaraderie back then. And it hurt jazz when he left. Because that yeah. second half of the season was just murder for us fans in 20, yeah, it was. Uh, 22, I think it was 20, 21, rather. Um, it, it's sad that he went through that alone. As a fan, I wish I was there for him more. Like, what mm-hmm. could I have done to cheer him up during those times? I, I don't know. Uh, but as a loud fan down on the field. But, um, <laughs> yeah, just, just in general, it's what he's gone through as the organization – I think the skip stuff's meaningful. I mm-hmm. think that skip may not be here in a couple of years because he's going to be sought out for. And I don't know if they're going to pay him what he can make from another team at that time. Look, yeah. he's from St. Louis. They're, they did not do well last year. I think they kept their manager. What if they don't do well again and skips a free agent manager next year? Or, uh, right now he's on a team option next year. He's only signed to the end of the season. Yeah. But what he's done to the culture and how he reached out right away, that's great. Because we saw, you know, my thoughts on Mattingly. I'm not going to rehash that as a manager. <laughs> as a person, he's really nice. As a as someone who gives to charity, he's great. But as a manager, you could see he just didn't gel well with the young players. And the older players, like the captain um, at the time, yeah. Yeah. was all Mattingly. It's just Mattingly and, as a player. And from the management, but you know, yeah. I, I wish I could have done more for Jazz to make him feel happier down as a player. Yeah, uh, there was, like you said, for me, I, my, my main takeaway was that I, I haven't ever heard an interview like that before. To be honest with you, with any, with any dudes, and I, I called it out on the show yesterday. Was um, loads of the questions that he was asked and he answered. I, I would have loved to have asked Jazz directly, and would have loved to have been, you know, in that position, but that environment for him that podcast specifically those people you know it it brought an openness out of jazz that that i don't think i would have been able to achieve and others haven't achieved historically and that was he felt comfortable and it was just a way to open up and it felt like he wanted to he saw as like a therapy session to be honest with you he wanted to kind of clear his chest on a few topics great you know it's fair to say with jazz like He's not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. And equally, like the the knock on him is, which is where David Sampson went today, which I thought was really interesting, was like, what have you done, Jazz? Like to be speaking this way. What have you done? So what was your take on David Sampson's reaction? Well, I know Jazz had a jolly day in he did say. today. <laughs> he did. Um look, David Sampson's a crook. And he <laughs> he he ripped off the city of Miami. He was part of that. They, they built it, they, whatever, let's not hash that out. Mm-hmm. Who is he to stop, to talk about how players after he's out of the game are treated inside the clubhouse? And why does something in 2023 when he's injured because of a mistake by the grounds crew or a mistake in your home ballpark, a mm-hmm. freak injury, why does that matter when you're discussing something in 2021? Both can be true. He could have had been treated like trash in, in that clubhouse in 2021, mm-hmm. and he can be injury prone. But what has he done? Again, he's the reason that fans go to that ballpark. Anti-Samson, uh, you are reasons fans didn't go to the ballpark. 
Chaz is a reason fans do go to the ballpark. He's the reason that kids in Miami are being Marlins fans because he's our star. He's our superstar, as Jazz would put it. He's been told his whole life, you're the superstar, as he said. And Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. what? He's acting like it. He's a leader. And he performs. He's going to hit your 40 for 40 if, if, when he stays healthy this season. I'm expecting him to, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'll defend Jazz every day to anyone. And I don't care how much money you have or Mm -hmm. what your thoughts are on him. Uh, Jazz is amazing. He's a good dude. I'm with you. I, I look at jazz. I think it's pretty simple. Uh, and I get, I get, I know where David Sampson's coming from because in the old days in the club hours, this is how we did things. It was a tough regiment and the rookies were treated like dirt because that's how you learn, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all this mentality of what we used to do is, is, is irrelevant for me in the modern day with a type of dude like jazz, a young superstar, black athlete, the question and that is clearly that the franchise is building around. That's the point, right? The, the franchise isn't building around Miguel Rojas and, and Jesus Aguilar. They're not. They're just dudes that are there filling a role at that moment, and that's fine. Jazz is the future of this organization. He's been handpicked. Jeter's made the deal, and that's you know that's that is the deal. And really, the key part of that, which is where maybe Mattingly missed it out, where maybe others missed out, is you need to tap into those dudes. And you need to create the environment that's going to bring the best out of them. And that's where I think maybe Mattingly and the surrounding failed Jazz because they allowed Miggy Rowe and his crew to do it the old school way. And that doesn't get the best out of Jazz. This is the point. How do you extract the best version of Jazz? And it wasn't that culture. It was the wrong culture for him. And Skip recognized that. Skip basically sat down with Jazz and said, Jazz, listen, there is no I in team, but there's an I in Chiz home, and you are the team, is basically what he's saying. And I'm going to build this around you, brother. Tell me what you need. I'm going to make this happen. That's the difference. That was the true difference. So, you know, there's, you can look at this in many ways. But for me, I want to get the most out of my superstars. and. Miggy Rowe, Aguilar, Donnie, the rest of it, they missed out. They missed that opportunity with Jazz. They didn't create the right situation for him, rightly or wrongly. Let's do the final ad. Go on. Go on. Yeah, go on. Uh, I was just going to say one more comment. If you look at how the old school is versus the new school, just look at the Atlanta Braves. Back mm. in the day, they were the gatekeepers of everything, right? The no True. fun team. It had to be a certain way. And Great now they're call. a party fest out there with Ron Vacuna. And and some of those players on that team, and more power to them. The game has moved, and it's yeah. a celebration now. It's not stiff for sure. Ah, uh, yeah, May, you make a great point, and I I feel like actually the Braves is like the perfect, you know, stand up organization. You say, you know, and you you hold it up to Miggy Rowe, and you go, Miggy, listen, times have changed, buddy. This is what the modern game looks like. These are the modern players, and these are the modern personalities, rightly or wrongly, but. Ronald Acuna Jr. needs to be allowed to flourish. We maybe don't need a Freddie Freeman putting the handbrake up on him. Freddie's not there anymore. Oh, surprise, surprise. Freddie and, and Miggy Rowe are in, in L.A. together. <laughs> you know, interesting. I'm interested to see how fun that clubhouse is. Gut feel is not very. Um, <laughs> also, there's some some serious gambling issues going on in that clubhouse right now. <laughs> That's a conversation to get in after this ad. Um, so we'll carry this on. I want to talk about the rotation specifically. Um, we're probably going to go a little bit long on this episode, but it's been a stunner. So let's keep it rolling. Um, want to talk about really like where the Marlins are at and really the, the sense maybe that, that Craig shared around there's maybe not much activity happening if the Marlins are standing pat seemingly. So let's cover that in a second. Before we do that, this episode is brought to you by our good friends, of course, over at game time. And, well, we need the graphics up, so producer, hit those, hit the button. There you go. Uh, And you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. You shouldn't. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And with last-minute killer deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And the beautiful thing, too, you can see the view from your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront. 
so you know you're getting that great deal before you check out. And you can also buy tickets in two seconds with two taps, maybe even one second. Two taps in a second, maybe. It's close. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets for game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem the code, and the code is locked on for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, guys, final segment here on Locked on Marlins on Wednesday, the 20th of March. Peter Pratt in the house, also with Chase Blake, and the pup has arrived too. For those watching, they will know what I'm talking about. For those listening, Chase's those, dog has arrived on the scene. For those listening, you should be watching the YouTube and subscribing there. We there you appreciate go. you listening on whichever podcast platform you are listening on. But if you are watching, I'm a, I, not, not only female fans could show their puppies. Let me just say that as I have my dog on screen. There you go. Let's let's see how well trained uh, the pup is as well. Start, you know, we start talking about Abby Garcia, and you know things could get sideways real quick. <laughs> anyway, let, let's talk about the rotation. Um, let's start with some. We've we talked Yuri already, so I think we're both aligned on that. We're expecting maybe the news we we don't we didn't want to hear, but we are where we are. With that being said, Sandy's down. Let's assume Yuri is. Some positive stuff today. Feels like Braxton's on his way back. Feels like Eddie's kind of on his way back. Both of those guys seemingly like trending in the right direction. But clearly, you know, they're both going to start the season on the IL at this point. Like they need to be built up accordingly. Yeah. So with that being said, with Yuri down, these other guys on the IL, and equally like, and, and Craig called this out on this the episode this morning as well. I've been thinking about this. I think we all have. We saw Trevor Rogers last time out in the velo dip. It was alarming, the velo dip. And so, man, I'm intrigued to see about Trevor. Like, is there something more to that? And that would be another blow for the fish. But, Chase, how, how surprised have you been that this slew of injuries has occurred? Yuri's looks to be, like, season ending. And at this point, there's not really any kind of intention to go and scoop up any of these remaining, like, free agents you know, innings eaters, whatever it might be. So how surprising has that been for you? You and I cannot have asked or promoted more for the Miami Marlins to go out and get some help here because mm -hmm. they're not doing it. They're just watching. Like you got Blake Snell, two years, 64, 62 million, something like that. Yeah, I mean, that's something. nothing about what he wanted. Um, you, you have Lorenzen out there. You have Montgomery just sitting there. You need an <laughs> ace. And you know what? Would it be so bad next year to have Montgomery in that pitching staff as someone, even if a, like he's probably good enough to be a third starter, but even if having a guy like that as your fifth starter, mentoring these young guys who have never thrown as many innings before, it'd be great. They're not doing it, but they should. <laughs> um, yeah, Bauer, they're, they're definitely not doing it. <laughs> Bauer outage. I'm scared to even say that name, but Ooh. Bauer... He's just so sitting much. there, and he's so cheap. He matches exactly what you look for in a ball player. Maybe not some of the off-the-field things. Shenanigans, let's call Shenanigans, it. Shenanigans, we'll say that. <laughs> but from an on... Oh, boy. Talk about power outage. <laughs> it's been a power outage. Did you lose me? Uh, you're Did back, you you're back. You're back. I'm back. Go I'm on. sorry. As I say, it, it, I mean, that cut out at the right time for us, you know, <laughs> because of who I was discussing. So we're not going to exactly. go back to that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> is it that bad to that the money matches where you need to be from your organization and it's just sitting there? Man, you, as Craig said it best, mm -hmm. you don't want to be the team that doesn't pull that trigger and have that guy perform for another team that's beating you in, yep. in a year from now. Yeah, for sure, so, mate. I, it's, but, you know, it, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think we're all aligned on that situation, to be honest with you. Like, it, it we're in, like, and Craig framed it in a different way where it's like, this isn't the first choice, clearly, because, right. you know, but it's the, we're in desperate, I think he framed it as it's desperate measures. Desperate you know. time calls for desperate measures. Exactly. And, I, and for the Marlins, they're absolutely in that bucket at this point where, you know, with Yuri down, Brax, Eddie, you know, Trevor, who knows? Like, I, you know, could Trevor Rogers be the final little, like, domino here that, like, finally pushes pushes them well, into doing something, maybe? To, to quickly answer that, and I'll do this quick for you. To answer where we are right now, is it where we thought we'd be when we entered camp? No. Mm. Uh, do they have enough? Maybe. We're not sure. 
can the uh, Sorianos of the world save us? Can the Hoings take a step up and improve, take some innings here? Point being, these young guys have never experienced the amount of innings you're about to push on them, and you have to make up for 300 innings if you take Sandy and Yuri out of it. Yep. It's rough to do. I hope we're having this conversation in, in July where they go out at the deadline and get somebody mm -hmm. to help push down that stretch because you saw what happened when we did win. Both our pitchers were exhausted. All of them were injured, and our bullpen was dead. So, well, I mean, Nar Nardi was decent, but, he was. I mean, truthfully, they just never threw that many innings. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We're, we're out of time for today. We've gone five over already, so we'll, Sorry about you know. That. I no, I no no no. I was a contributor to that situation. So you know these conversations we have. We were talking way too long about chili dogs. I mean, I, I steered it in that way. What was I thinking? Um, <laughs> I, I'm with you though. Like it's it's already thin. It was already looking thin before the Yuri news, and it's just gotten even thinner for longer. Listen, if the Marlins pitching isn't there, like in any kind of shape, then this team is in is in real trouble, real trouble, real quick. And man, listen, the pirates are lined up for opening, you know, opening week, weekend, however you want to phrase it. The pirates offense is looking like it could be dangerous in parts. That could be a real rude awakening, to be honest with you, for the Marlins. If, you know, you go like, okay, you know, Lozado's your one, but man, how do they line up after that? You know, is, is Ryan Weathers the two? I mean, AJ Puck's definitely been a standout and has been a story, but like, let's say they go Lazardo, Puck, and, and Weathers. And, and let's say they take, you know, they, they take a, a home series defeat to get it rolling and the pitching gets blown up and decimated. And you're like, man, that is not going to set the tone that the Marlins are looking for. You have one shot, Marlins players and staff, not players. You have what to the staff, to the ownership. You have one shot to make well on the, the playoff run. You have one shot. This is your shot. Bring them in. You want fans there? Bring help because you're going to need it throughout the season. And Bendix, spend that money. Spend the money, baby. All right, Chase has called it. Spend the money. I want to see J.D. Martinez as well. I want to see some pitching help, and I want to see J.D. Martinez. So spend the money. This is why they've got these concessions. These They got, they got the offers. Someone outside the stadium is going to be selling 50 bucks worth of Vuvuzelas. Like They've brought these ideas in so they can capitalize on, on the merch outside. Those boo boo sailors are going to be flying out. Those drums are going to be flying out. No pots and pans, though, by the way. Guys, that's been Locked On Marlins for Wednesday, the 20th of March. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day. Thanks to the Loud Marlins fan for joining me. Hit him up, of course, at Loud Miami Fan on X. Uh, I know he's got a few things in store building up for opening day. Uh, Chase, I'll be following along. No doubt about it, mate. Looking forward to seeing everything you've got queued up. And I'll be following your story jealously. Um, from the UK as you head over for the for opening day. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. I think I've teased this out already. There's been a scheduling conflict, mainly my fault, but I think the UK go Sean Barrett is back in town tomorrow. So we'll look forward to that one. Uh, we need to talk about the bullpen tomorrow. It's finally time. I've, I've been hard on Tanner Scott this spring, primarily because he's been absolutely putrid thus far. However, we're, show, we're seeing signs of return for Tanner Scott. Nardi looks nice. What about Michael Givens? There's loads of things going on in the bullpen, so we need to spend some time with that one. I look forward to seeing you guys then.